Hello everybody and welcome back to Shepherd's Permadeath Adventures. So this is the second long play of four for RPG season. And we're on the third floor of this dungeon at the moment. And uh, oh my goodness. Well I am not going the whole way through that trap and everything just to get a bucket that has nothing in it so yeah I am not going to be doing that in any shape or form right so we're on the third floor of this dungeon at the moment do I have any torches actually I don't think I I do have one that'll do the job okay <coughs> I wonder just how many floors are actually on this dungeon because uh Level 4 now, I have a horrible feeling things are going to start getting a little bit rough. Because my armor is still... You know, my armor is pretty... Pretty basic, I haven't really found much. 2-2-2, you know, two, 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 all 2. Apart from my shorts. Burlap shorts. That's about it. Okay. Let's take a few glasses at this goblin. Remember, I'm doing this a bit differently to the way I usually do. I'm actually going to do a spell sword or a night blade, whichever you prefer to call them. Um, which is basically a mixture of both strength and magic. So, yeah, we're going to take that approach. It's I've done it before, and it's quite an interesting kind of character to play because. What have we got a name? Um, it's kind of the best of both worlds, in a, in a sense. Because you're not... You're not quite as weak as a... As a pure mage, but you're not as strong as, as a pure fighter. It's it's quite an interesting one to make play. Bit awkward to keep kind of on track with, because of the, the whole... Um, you know, you have to sort of even out your combat a bit more, so it is a bit difficult, but it does the job. Uh, come on. Let's uh, hold him. Tough, there we go. So as you can see, I've got 17 and 17 of both strength and wisdom at the moment. And, uh, let's just see how we get on. Okay. Got a crate over here. So we have Okay. Let's just keep moving. I'm still really, really kind of wowed at the at the speed difference, even when I'm recording it, it's it's such a difference to what it was. With uh, the full shader mode. Okay, I hear a lizard man. Yeah, I knew I heard a lizard man. I'm not too fond of lizard men, as many of you very well know. So I'm just gonna take him out as quickly as possible. Super damage. Ah, he's doing not that much damage to me. Come on! With his pointy stick. Ah, that's enough whacking on this. Just finish him off with a fireball. Be the best way to go about it. One more should do it. There we go. Okay, tadpoles. Why would a lizard man carry tadpoles around? Well, I suppose there is a little bit of logic behind that, if you kind of think about it. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. Really? Another one? Well, my health isn't really quite up to scratch here, so... I'm just gonna take him out with fireballs. Bring it on! Oh, this will take quite a few of them, actually. 
I'm not liking this. To be honest. There we go. I thought that might have finished enough. Ooh, another rank segment. Okay, so that means we've got two now. We've got two segments to the rank. That's pretty sweet. Okay, let's keep going, shall we? Uh, uh, we'll go this way. Have a look around. Uh huh, uh huh. Is there anything here? No? Hmm. Let me see. Okay, there's nothing there. Uh -huh. There's a trap here somewhere. Let's find it, shall we? Okay. It's gone off again, so it mustn't be in my proximity. No, oh, there goes my torch. Secret door. Okay, so it must be this one. There we go. But, um, I'll tell you what, I have actually been playing lately is stone keep and I can really I can really really tell that um, you know Alex says that stone keep was quite an inspiration for this game and you can actually tell where the inspiration comes from like if you play stone keep you'll see it immediately um, how it actually in inspired Alex with malevolence it's actually quite interesting and um, for any of you that haven't played stone keep you really should it's a really good game um, it is uh, it is real time as opposed to turn based, but it's a really good game. I haven't gotten very far into it, but it, it it's a fantastic game. It's uh, uh oh, I hear an ogre, but I don't see. Oh, there he is! I can see his club in the distance. Okay, Ogre's not really what I was looking forward to battling against, I'll be honest. Ah, uh, we've fired us off. Let's see how we deal with him. But, um... Yeah, you should definitely try that. If you like Malevolence, you'll, you'll like Stonekeep. It's actually quite a fun game. I'm not going to say too much because, uh, you know, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. He's not doing that much damage to me, actually. It's not too bad. Um, but yeah, it, it's really good. You can see how various different games have actually inspired it. Um, inspired my levels. Like, you've got Might and Magic series, particularly the older ones, like 3, 4, and 5, um, which are actually three games I haven't played, but when you actually look at them, you can literally see it. So... It, you know, it's like Alex is a huge fan of the Might and Magic series, um, so like you kind of see where it's all joining together as to inspirations of of malevolence, and they're really, really well done. Like you know, you can tell the inspiration. Ooh, another act segment, and everything. And it's it's very interesting, and it's very um. You know, it's it's cool to see all these different games kind of blended together almost. Not in a sense that they're necessarily blended together, but you know, where you see the inspiration of them and they're done really, really well. Um, I mean, <sighs> you have other games out there like, um, you know, I've already given Grimrock enough of a trashing over RPG season, but <coughs> Grimrock is a perfect example of an old school game done wrong. Um, it has the look of a good old school dungeon crawler roguelike. It has the look, it has the kind of the same hood to a point, and everything else. It looks good. It, it looks exactly what you look for in such a such a genre, but it doesn't really turn out that way. Whereas this is 
This is completely different. This is everything you'd want in, in so many ways. And I think what I like about Malevolence personally is that it brings a bit of a Daggerfall feel back for me because Daggerfall was probably the game that got me into RPGs um, back in the 90s. Um, that and that and I had to be holder, and um, it was, you know, I always liked, uh, you know, exploring dungeons and things like that, and and having tons and hundreds and hundreds of dungeons to explore. That is what I loved about Daggerfall, and like you know, malevolence is infinite, so there is no. Like, you know, there's no end to it. And that's what I love, because there's so many good RPGs out there. And dungeon, like, you know, dungeoneering is kind of something that they have a habit of forgetting about. Um, dungeoneering is, is is something that I've always liked doing. Like, in, in Daggerfall, it was... I spent more time in dungeons just... You know, even if I wasn't on a quest, I still went into dungeons and, you know, just to explore. It was something I always liked doing because it was always dungeons you'd find the best items and, and, and things like that. And it didn't matter how, whether I was maxed out in my level or whether I was, you know, I had all the best equipment. I still went down there looking for more. And, it, you know, it got to the stage where I knew I couldn't get any better equipment than I already had. But it was just the fact that it was really fun to do it. And the thing is, is that a lot of RPGs have kind of forgotten that now. And, like, you know, a lot of RPGs you'd have, you know, a couple of dungeons in them or, or whatever. I mean, like, you have... The Elder Scrolls are, are good enough. I mean, they have a lot of dungeons and things, but they're too fucking small. That's, that's my issue. I used to love these gigantic dungeons and in Daggerfall and I used to, you know, love getting lost in them and, and, and things like that. Um but when it came to Morrowind, the dungeons had just you know, gone down in size so much. Now I know this is due to the fact that it was actually you know, the whole world of Morrowind was handmade whilst Daggerfall was it was procedurally generated. Um but in a sense that it's the same for everybody. And it's, you know, I just don't like these small dungeons. I mean, when it came to Morrowind or, or Oblivion or whatever, I could have, you know, a cave or a dungeon or whatever done in about, you know, 10, 15 minutes thereabouts, depending on the size. And it was, um, you know, it, it bugged the hell out of me because... I just used to love getting lost in dungeons and Daggerfall and that, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, I missed it, in, in a sense, um, when I, when all the, the new Elder Scrolls started coming out and that, and, you know, like Morrowind was probably the last proper RPG in the Elder Scrolls series, and then they're, they kind of turned into action adventures, because they went all the fucking console and, and shit, but, um, I for years I have been looking for for an RPG that has basically done that. Bollocks. Oh well, doesn't matter. Um I've been looking for an RPG that has allowed me to get that same enjoyment as um Daggerfall did. Like, you know, going through big big dungeons that could take you all day just to get through. And Malevolence has done that. Alex has done that brilliantly with Malevolence, and I absolutely love it. Like, if you if you go into a 10th floor dungeon, it could take you, you know, it could take you all day to get through it. It really could for the 10th floor. Um, I mean, you're looking at... An average, if you're going to explore the entire floor, you're going to be looking at about an hour, a floor thereabouts. Um, like, in the last episode I got through two floors in an hour and a half. But that was pretty good going. You know. And 
you know, I, I miss things like that where you can just get lost in a dungeon and, and things like that. Now, I know you can never really get lost in a dungeon in Malevolence, but the sheer size and scale of them is good enough for me when it comes to that. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's why I like Malevolence as much as I do. You know, it, it truly is bringing back the old school in game. It, it really is. Something that Grimrock tried to do and failed miserably. Yet, for some reason, people still went bonkers for it. And, you know, having finished the 4 RPG season, I still, you know, I gave the game a bloody chance and it failed miserably. Um. I'm, I'm not going to say why, because I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but if you want to see why, by all means watch my Let's Play of it, um, or even my review. Um, but I mean, <sighs> Malevolence is, is literally, to me, it is a, you know, it's... The perfect example of old school RPG brought into modern day times, in, into modern day gaming, and it's done so bloody well. Like it, it is done absolutely brilliantly. There, there's no other way to put it. And Malevolence like, is going to be one of these games that. I'll come back to time and time and time and time again or for God knows how many years, if not for the rest of me bloody life. Just like Daggerfall. Daggerfall was another one of those games I kept coming back to time and time again. Um, even, you know, nearly 20 years on. Um, like I, I started playing Daggerfall when I was about, I don't know. I suppose I would have been about six, six or seven. I suppose I would have been thereabouts, give or take. And you know, even still today, I I come back and I play Daggerfall. You know, and I still get that, that same that same feeling. That I did back when I first played the same enjoyment. And the same is going to apply for Malevolence. It's going to be a game that I come back to time and time again. No matter how many years on, it allows me to come back to. So, <laughs> modern, modern day gaming has it's kind of forgotten the roots behind it all. It, it's forgotten what made the genre in the first place and it's kind of changed particularly in the AAA history it, it has changed and they've kind of forgotten what it was that made games good back in the day I mean, look at the Elder Scrolls series they've, they've gone so beyond what the Elder Scrolls was that it's not even the same genre anymore um, Morrowind was, was the last in the Elder Scrolls that you could actually say was an RPG. It was the last one. Since then, they're now action adventures because they've just been dumbed down that much. That, um, you know, they've just been dumbed down that much that they can't even be considered an RPG anymore. They are action adventures, and, and that's all they are, and that's what they've become. And I know that a lot. The main reason that this has been done is because of consoles, and it's because they're trying to, you know, there's, the amount of gamers on consoles completely outweighs that of the PC game in, in this day and age. So the AAA industry are kind of concentrating more on, on the console side of things than the PC now. And because of it, they're dumbing down their games. Right, okay, we're just gonna have to use this. They're they're dumbing down their games, and the Elder Scrolls is is completely and utterly notorious for it. 
And I, I was actually talking to a friend of mine about this um, just the other day. And he too has followed the Elder Scrolls since the beginning. And um, he was saying, like, if, if the Elder Scrolls even bring out another, you know, Elder Scrolls 6, you know, after they've made their money off of Elder Scrolls Online, he says he doesn't even reckon he's going to buy it. Because it's only going to be dumbed down even more. That, that's his belief on it. And, you know, he... The only reason that he put so many hours into Skyrim was to get his money's worth out of it. That was it. And he's, he, that's what he said. Like, he said, the only reason I put five, six hundred hours into Skyrim is just so that I got my money's worth. And that was the only reason he did it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have. Ooh, I hear another ogre. But, that's the way the ending is done. And that's why, you know, it's nice to see games like Malevolence coming out that sort of go back to the roots of where RPGs started and you know Malevolence does that absolutely brilliant it really does and I think you know I think the entire community would agree with me on that that you know and it's, it's the entire like the entire community kind of appreciates the fact that this is going back to to the roots of RPGs and it's what the others in the community have also been looking for. And that's why we all love Malevolence as much as we do. Because it, it brings us back to those days. It brings us back to the roots of RPGs like we used to play them. And it's something that has been missing in, in games for a very long time. RPGs have just forgotten their roots. And I think... Yeah. Like I haven't played the early the early Might and Magics. Um and that's that's being completely honest about it. Um I've only played from six onwards. I'm planning on changing that because I'm actually gonna do start doing let's plays maybe a month or two after RPG season. I'm gonna start with Might and Magic One, which probably has barely any graphics whatsoever. Ooh, hello, lightning bolt level four, sweet. But yeah, it barely has any graphics at all. And I'm going to try, and I'm even going to call it, Let's Try to Play. And the reason I want to do this is because in a way I want to do, it's kind of a research for me in, in a certain way. Because I want to, mainly with the Might and Magic series, because I'm a huge fan of the Might and Magic series. Um, but I haven't played the first five. And I'm going to go from 1 to 5. And then I'm going to go from 5 up to... Like, you know, I'm going to go 6. I'm going to do them all. I'm going to, I'm going to do Let's Plays of all the Might and Magics at some stage. And the reason I want to do this is because I think... The last decent Might and Magic was 6. After that, it lost its way. It, it was no longer the Might and Magic that everybody loved. And there's actually been there's actually been this you know this argument between between gamers and fans of Might and Magic for oh it'd be going on nearly two decades now as to which Might and Magic was best was it six or was it five and I kind of want to look into this as well but the only way that I'm going to be able to do that is to actually play them and I want to kind of wonder. Why is it so evenly matched as the, you know, it's like 50% say 6, and 50% say 5. And when I look into it, and I'm going to even do a sort of episode saying which is better. And I'm going to sort of break it down and do it that way. You know, but I want to see kind of, and the Might and Magic series is a good example of I want to see how gaming has changed. I want to go through each of the Might and Magics and I want to see how they've changed over the years and how they ended up basically ending with their disastrous 9. I want to see why was 9 such a horrible game. Because it was. It was 
the worst out of all of them. After six, it just started to go downhill. Seven was okay. Eight was just fucking weird. And then you got nine, which was completely and utterly a different beast altogether. It it didn't even feel like Might and Magic. It felt like something else that had elements of Might and Magic in it. Ooh, end of level chest, eh? Goody, 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 goody. Okay, a bottle of Bladderbeer's Brew. Ooh, the design has changed. Sweet, I didn't realize the design had changed. Oh yes, now that's a weapon. Ha <laughs> ha. That is... Out of all the end of level chests that I have actually done, this one is probably the best I've had so far. It's actually got really good items I can, that are of use to me. Now that's my current weapon. But this is my new beast. Okay, and then we gotta put on these as well. We got some potions over, and we got a gazetteer over as well. So, yeah, that was a really nice find. I'm not gonna bother using a torch because I'm nearly done here. But um, I want to see. It's kind of, as I said, a little experiment for me. And I'm going when it comes to my magic, especially two and one and two. I'm gonna be really out of my depth. Because, you know, I didn't, like, you know, graphics were already a big thing when I was playing games, when I first started. So I'm going into kind of a zone that, uh, I don't even know what I'm going into. I'm not even sure what to be expecting. All I know is that I'm going to be needing a shitload of grey paper and probably about 20 pencils, because there's going to be a lot of them broken by the time I'm finished. But... The Mighty Magic series is a perfect example of me kind of finding out and kind of understanding how RPGs have changed so much over the years that they're barely RPGs anymore. Oh my god, there's another one here. Um, because it, it is actually true. In, in most cases, Games that are considered RPGs are not even RPGs anymore. Um, like, you know, and the other scrolls is a perfect example. Is like, I can't remember the last time that there was any sort of decent RPG, but a Mass Effect. Okay, a Mass Effect was pretty damn good. Um, I only played the first one, mind you. Um, but other than that, it's always been it's either been Mass Effect or the Elder Scrolls, and the other scrolls aren't even proper RPGs anymore. Mass Effect is, I suppose, kind of, you know, it's a modernized RPG, so to speak. I'm not, you know, I like the Mass Effect series, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them RPGs as such. Not proper RPGs. Um, so hopefully, true playing the actual Might and Magic games. I kind of get an insight as to see where it went wrong for the RPG genre. And it's going to be... It's something that has bugged me for years, and I think now that I got, you know, I have Might and Magic 1 to 6, I got the limited edition pack on GOG, and I've also got 7, 8, and 9 here on hard copy. And... I'll, I will get 10 because that's only just release. It's a completely different beast to the others, but it looks interesting. And I want to see how and why it changed, and I think by playing them all, I'll be able to find that question, the answers to that question. So, it's something that I'm going to do. But until then, the only game that I can really call a true RPG that brings back the 90s elements is Malevolence. Without a doubt, Malevolence Alex has, has has hit the nail on the head when it comes to getting a 90s feel in a modern day gaming industry. You know, it's it's a modern 90s RPG. That's what that's what this is. And it's done fucking brilliantly. I don't care what anyone says. It is done brilliantly. And um like malevolence is only going to get better. It's as simple as that. It's only gonna get better. Right now we're still in beta. We still have to, okay, you know, 
it still has to reach one point oh. And then after one point oh you've still got the expansion to come. And and so much more. You know, I mean there's there's still lots of features that Alex has to implement. There's the expansion after one point oh. He might even add in a few extra bits before the expansion. I don't really know about that for definite, but you never know. Like when when this game is fully finished, expansion and all, we're gonna be looking at about you know, twenty, thirty different enemies. We're gonna be looking at all sorts of different enemies as well. There's gonna be magic enemies, there's gonna be you know like at the moment it's kind of all you know, melee enemies. But we're gonna get magic enemies in as well. Which is gonna completely turn the tables around. To the point that a pure fighter is gonna be weak against these magic enemies, but a mage would have an easy time against them. And this is all like you know, this game is fantastic in its current state. I can't wait to see like when it reaches its full full potential. Once everything that, that Alex has planned is in it. Because you know, it's a fantastic game as is. So I can't even begin to imagine how awesome this is gonna be once this actually reaches 1.0 and the expansion's put in as well. It, it's gonna be phenomenal. And I just can't wait for it. I really can't wait for it. Like, it it's... Like, even when this came out at first, you know, as, as open beta, it was a fantastic game. You know, and... It, it's only getting better. It's getting better with every single update. And... You know... <laughs> it's only going to get better. And... I absolutely love it. I really do. It, it's... You know... I am... Yet to see an indie game produce the quality that that this has. Like I I've played quite a few indie games. Um as I, as I said before, it was malevolence that kind of got me into the indie scene. Like I I had gotten to the stage where I was kinda of going off gaming because I, I was sick and tired of, of mediocre title after mediocre title coming from the from the triple A industry. And I <laughs> At the time I kind of went console, and that's kind of where it all came from, I suppose, all this sort of negativity. And, um, I kind of, I I just happened to stumble on Malevolence by pure and utter accident at the time. And it was when I was kind of looking at the, at the game creator's website, and I was just looking through the gallery to see what kind of you know what kind of games people are producing using using the game creators um, software, and I saw a um, malevolence sort of Acronax. and I looked at it and I said, "That looks fucking awesome." I said, and I kind of I looked at a few more screenshots and I said to myself, "That is rem that reminds me extremely of Daggerfall," and I, I was getting this real Daggerfall nostalgic feeling when I saw the screenshots. And sure enough, I looked it up. I I, I went to Google, I looked up Malevolence, the, the Sword of Acronax, and I started looking up YouTube and and everything else. And I went onto the onto the website. I joined the forums and and, and did the usual. And, you know, this was about I think I joined in about November 2012. And um so like it wasn't it wasn't even open beta then. And I kinda just sat eagerly and I was I was firing out questions left, right and centre, like is is it gonna be like this, what's gonna be in it, like is there gonna be gills in it, is there gonna be this, is there gonna be that? And I'm I'm sure I wrecked the others' heads by asking them as many questions as I did. But um Yeah, it was 
I remember when it was announced that it was going to be open beta, and when it came to me actually, you know, when it came to the day that I was actually going to download it, I remember because of the time difference between here in Ireland and and um, and Australia, it wasn't actually ready to download until about five in the morning. And I actually stayed up until five in the morning, and I just set it for download. And then I went to I went to bed then, and then sure when I woke up it was it was ready, and I just got stuck straight into it. And at the time, my computer was out of action uh, because my I was having I had a faulty graphics card. My graphics card burnt out, so I couldn't play it on this. And I was playing it on my laptop. About, oh God, it would have been about four or five frames per second. I was playing, it, and I didn't give a crap. I was just that into it. And yeah, I was playing at about four or five frames per second for about oh I don't know about a month. I think it was. And never bothered me at all because it was just that enjoyable. The frames per second didn't even bother me. Didn't not in the, not even in the slightest. It, it just it just didn't bother me. And when you have a game and you can play it in really shitty frames per second, you know it's fucking good. You know it's good. Right, we got a full ink. Excellent. Excellent, yes. 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 Ma. Okay, we've got some stuff to sell too. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna save because you know, you never know. I remember I had I was doing a I was doing an episode of something. And the bloody power went out on me and I ended up having to start all over again. But um Thankfully, it was a game that I could actually. Uh, I, I had like a number of saves, so I just did a safe save every time I started off an episode. So yeah, I, I really got to remind myself to save a bit more, uh, a bit more often than this. Okay, we are done here because I'm not going into that shitty corner with that fire trap just for the sake of a bucket that doesn't even do anything. Um. Okay, I'm gonna rest once more, and then we're gonna get the hell out of here. There we go. Okay, just double checking. Yep, we are done here. We are done. Oh wait, what's this? I forgot something up here. Right, one second. Let's go up here and check it out. I know it's probably nothing, but you know, just in case there might be something up here. You never know. There might be a chest there. Don't want to miss any chests. Um, no, I forget what I was saying. I actually completely and utterly forget what I was saying. Oh, I was telling you about like when when Eleven first came out and what it was like for me, wasn't I? Um, yeah, but that, that's what it was like for me. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give a shit about slower friends per second. I was just enjoying myself too much. I remember I got to like at the time the experience system was a lot different. And I got to level 20 in about two days. Or near enough level 20. That wasn't a fucking achievement in its own. <laughs> but, yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. Did I get bought chests there? Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Yeah, I would have, yeah. Okay. Not the best thing for us to do. Use a portal. Pretty sure they're active. I just gotta make sure it's not a broken one, which is a chaos portal. I could end up in the middle of nowhere. Ugh, yeah, going with it. Okay, so not gonna work very well. Ching! That's it. Ah, fuck. Come on. No, I'm gonna break this anti- Whoop. 
Oh, 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 oh. No, I didn't. I actually fixed. Ah, there we go. I thought I was going to bollocks that one up. Not to worry, though. It's all okay. Right. I am going to save my game and make sure these will work. I'm, I'm, I'm positive they work. But it's, it's, it's been so long since I've used one. Okay. So we're going to head straight back to town and then we'll go into the next dungeon. So I shall be right back. Right, so we're in town. Indeed, the portal worked with that like a charm. Relax, you're here. We're gonna stay here for the night anyway. Use the keys. And I never really sort of did much with the portals, I'll be honest with you. I've never used them to any great extent before. So Yeah, it was nice to to have a have a shot through one. Move along, citizen. Move along, citizen. Alright, let's see. Good blade. What have you got for me? You with what have you got for me? Okay, so we're gonna, gonna sell all this anyway. I have no need for it all. This is the best I can do, is it? Well, nice. We got a nice bit of gold iron there. Steel. I've got it all. Ooh, nice helmet. Health bonus plus two, one on one chance, armor six. And my weapon is kind of the best. Uh, done. Fine. Yep, I'll wear that helmet. I'll get right. back to my work then. Definitely. Right, sorry, the inventory a bit. Good blade. So, how did you get this you rubbish off a corpse? This isn't a Is charity. Well? well, I got most of it off here. a corpse. Yeah, but some of it came from a chest. Just to let you know. Okay, we're going to the next blacksmith. Praise be to Akronauts. I've got quite a few potions, so I think I'm okay at the good blade. I can okay. Help is uh, there anything in particular? Right, let's have a look here. Okay. Uh, ooh. No. Uh, no, there's nothing there of real interest. Did you get this arrows, rubbish off arrows. a corpse? This isn't a charity. charity. This isn't a charity. And why is not a charity? That's a creepy statue right there. See anything you like? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I have no use for that. Why not? It's a potion. Alright, let's just uh, sell all this miscellaneous stuff. You drive a hard bargain. Quite a deal. Quite a deal. Trade. Oh, quite a deal. I'll bring a few torches. Just this quite month. a deal. Good day. Okay, one more blacksmith to go. Praise be to Akronox. Praise be to Akronox. Here. Good blade. Is there anything in particular? No, that's a nice one, but uh, I've already got one that's better than it. Probably do it on boots, I think. And gloves for. I'll be here. Just gonna have a look. My gloves are two, and my boots are two, so yes, I could do with them. Good blade. I can help Did you, you get with this that? rubbish off a corpse? You want the best. We have come to the okay, right place. So there's the boots. And there's those gloves. This isn't a Done. charity. That leaves us with get back to my work. Fourteen hundred gold, which ain't too shabby. Okay, sell off the good blade. Jolly good show, sir. So. Jolly good show. Uh, fine. Uh, Enjoy. Fine. So I'll be here. 70. Too bad at all. We're doing okay. Right. So we're gonna leave and we're gonna go into another dungeon. You know what? I might even go back to that one that we couldn't go into the first time because it was too strong for us. Yeah. Show that lizard man and that ogre who's boss. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Right. Onwards. Okay. Let's move on. Now. Where was that dungeon? I think... Right, that's where we were. So that's the dungeon there. It was right next to the farm, wasn't it? Right, I'm going back to pay a visit. Get some revenge. On those, uh... That lizard man and that horrible ogre. 
for uh, ambushing me. They're gonna regret it. They're gonna regret it big time. Wow, I'm nearly level 5. How did that happen? Well, I suppose I did kill a few things after I leveled up. And I disarmed quite a few traps as well, actually. Uh, let's just hope now that I'm not gonna get regret doing this. I need to start bringing up my wisdom a bit more because it's starting to fall. It was 17. So I may cast a few more spells than I have been. Okay, so it's down two segments. Down one segment. Yeah, south one. East two. Yeah, because there's the, there's the farm wall there. In fact, I might just go directly this way. Yeah, that'll do it. Go this way, and then we're gonna go... Yeah, there it is up there, sitting on top of the hill. Goddamn ogres. They're gonna pay. Okay. Let's... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> that was a, a very unexpected... Okay. So we're gonna go in here. And see what's in store for us. Well, we know what's in store for us. A lizard man and an ogre inside the doorway. Time for some payback. Okay. Yes, this brings back memories, alright. Okay. So we had a lizard man coming from us this direction. And our last experience here. Oh, it's an orc. Really? Hmm. Okay. That bewilders me slightly. Let's just hope they don't do too much more damage to me. Yeah, don't. It's Should be, I'm not using uh, my level 4 lightning because I want to get my wisdom back up as quickly as possible. Yeah, let him walk towards me. Hit him again. If I could. Wow, this guy doesn't want to go down. Does he? He really doesn't want to go down. Sorry, but I don't know exactly what happened there. Just as I killed him with the last strike, it just, uh, I leveled up and it just momentarily decided to, uh, freeze on me. I don't know what happened there. I think it's more of a problem on my side. I, I don't really know. Not to worry, we'll, we'll continue on anyway. Right, okay, I'm just gonna start my inventory, light up a torch. Let's mosey on down to Dungeon Town. Okay. Oh shit. Okay, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot here. Okay, yeah. Right. <coughs> there we go. What have we got? Monster here somewhere. Not quite sure where. But there is. Okay, he's gone, however. Still, still around. I just don't know where. Aha! Now we have him. Right, it's fireball, this bitch! Yeah. You're going down, Skyrim. 
There we go. Good stuff. Okay, that was up to him. And there was nothing on the on the table. And there's a trap right here. Lovely. Down. Can't be another one there, surely. Well, there's not another one exactly there. There's not. I'm not too far away. Okay. Just gotta keep a lookout. Aha! Uh -huh. There it is. Two traps. No wonder there are monsters behind here. Oh, how I wonder. Hmm, is there? Hello, any monsters around this direction, maybe? No? No monsters. No, that is a shame. No monsters at all. Mm, it sounds like an orc. Definitely sounds like an orc. Hmm. Let's see. Come out, come out wherever you are. You're hardly right behind me, are you? <laughs> well, yes, of course you are right behind me. Now that was a good one. I kind of figured that was right behind me. Alright, let's kill this Mr. Lizard Man. Come on. There we go. Ah, that should speed things back up a bit. Okay. Let's have a, a browse around. An old nose. Okay. Gotta be careful. There is shit going on here. That's a medium. I'm not gonna worry about him. Like I said, I'm not gonna worry about him. Okay, rejuvenation potion. Good stuff. Whoop. There is a trap nearby. There is a trap nearby. Keep our eyes out for it. Aha! There it is. Okay, we should be able to get this one with not too much bother. Okay, we'll just shoot down here. And we're gonna go down here. And done. Oh my god, there's another trap here. I don't like traps. They have a habit of killing me. There. Now what do we have over here? Anything over here? Maybe? Okay, this dungeon's. I should have really rested back there, shouldn't I? Because otherwise, I'm gonna have to go completely melee on his ass. 
Okay. Uh, let's see, what kind of potions do I have? Ah. Uh, I think I've got enough potions. I think I can use one, maybe. No, I won't. I'll, I'll just hack them. Let's go, Mr. Rourke. Alright. I'm okay for health at the moment. Wow, overkill. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, okay. I'm I'm gonna rest this time. I am gonna rest this time. Okay, we're pretty good to go. Right. Onwards we go. Right, we'll go back down this way where the orc came from actually. Just just for a bit of a change. Okay, let me see what we got here. Hmm. Nice. It's pretty quiet so far. I'm not sure if I like quiet. Generally not. At least we've got into this dungeon now. I don't know what happened to that orc. Ah, shit. Right, I'm not going through that. There has to be another way around. If I can avoid it, I'll go. I go around them. Oh shit! There goes my torch. I can see without it, but eh, it's just a bit better to have them. And also, it kind of gives me a reason to use them. Just a bit. Gonna go. Ooh, chests. Recall medallion. <laughs> Lovely. That's 500 G's. As in gold, not 500 grand. 500 gold. I think that's what we're gonna start calling it. Put G's for gold. 500 G's. That would be 10 G's. Alright, let's see what we've got here. This is a nice little corner. What we have here. Okay. Two chests. Torch. What more do you want? Recall medallion. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. What have we got? What are we dealing with here? Nothing at the minute. Take my anger out on the... On that... Fucking crate. Alright. Let's see. For this long place, I really should do a kind of... Sort of... Map out topics for myself to talk about. <laughs> I kind of run out of things to talk about now since I started finish talking about RPGs. In fact, they've changed over the years. Let me know if you guys agree with me on that, by the way. It would be an interesting. I'd like to hear your. You know, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it, actually. Whether, uh, whether you think I'm right and RPGs have changed over the years and to the point that they're not really RPGs anymore, or. Would you disagree with me on that one? I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, let me know. Because I'd be really interested in hearing. But, um, yeah. I, I, I definitely, I definitely think that, uh, things have changed over the years, alright, when it comes to the, it comes to the gaming industry. I, I don't think a lot of them even know what an RPG is anymore. I'll be honest with you. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing though. Fucking Might and Magic Nine lost the plot altogether though. Like, no. Okay, I'm, I'm going back on. I'm, I'm gonna start talk about Might and Magic again for a minute because you know, just to kind of get my point across as, as to what exactly I, I'm I'm going on about. You know. Nine was by far the worst in the series, and I think what happened was um, after after six, six was like a massive leap. 
graphically and you know visually and bought sound um, from the likes of you know from the other magic it was almost from five to six it was almost like they missed a, a whole you know a whole generation of graphics it was it was a huge huge leap and it was kind of like oh we've got I think what happened was is that they kind of introduced an, a new kind of, of gamer because of the graphics. Like, 6 was the first one I played. And it was kind of when this new generation of gamers was coming out, which were more graphically heavy gamers. And I think what kind of happened was is that they got a new audience because of, of the graphical change. And they saw that and they kind of said right we've done so well with 6 that is now let's, let's up the graphics again and they kind of did that with 7 they kind of made it look pretty and it, 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 it made it look pretty and kind of murky at the same time and sure enough they did that but it felt because they did that they kind of... <sighs> it lost its way somewhere somewhere along the development line. Seven... It, it, it lost something that Six had. And it wasn't nearly as good. And then Eight was just weird. Eight was a weird, weird game. It, it really was. It, it looked like Might and Magic. It played like Might and Magic. But it wasn't Might and Magic at the same time. It, it, it was something different. It, it became something that I don't even know what it became. It, it was weird. It was just... An, I, I can't even... It's one of those games that I can't even describe what happens. Something happened along the way with, with it, and it was weird. And I just can't put my sort of finger on it and say this is what happened. This is why it was why it went like this. I can't even do that. They, they upped the graphics again, but they just sort of enhanced the engine slightly. They didn't. You know, it wasn't a new engine or anything like that, like they did with 6. It was just a completely enhanced engine. And even then, it didn't look that much different. It it, it was a weird one. It, it was a weird, weird game for the Might and Magic series. And then they just went all out with 9, and they just upped the graphics again. And they, they completely changed the game with, with, with 9. It, it didn't even feel like Might and Magic anymore. And it, 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 not just that, it was a fucking bug fest. It really was. There was bugs coming out of its arse. There was that many in there. And the level design was fucking awful. I've done it again. Um, the level design was fucking god awful. I mean, awful. To the point that, you know, it was boring as fuck. It was just dreadful. The story was was okay, but I, I never got to the end. But I, I I didn't even get halfway through the story. I kind of I got halfway through nine. I didn't even get halfway through nine. I just got to the point with nine that I was so sick of it. Like you know, it, it was like me pretending that I'm playing a Might and Magic game, and it wasn't. And it it was just fucking off. And like, I don't know. Nine just lost the plot altogether. It was just... It was all over the shop. I don't think it even knew... I don't think even the developers knew what the hell was going on. Like, you know, they had such critical success with Six. And then it just went downhill, downhill, and it just... It got worse. With every game, it just got worse. And then, before you know it, the, the company were just gone. And we were left with with Might and Magic 9 as 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 the end until 
until 10 this year, which is, I think it's a decade now. It's been 10 years since we've had a Might and Magic game. And if I remember correctly, it's done by Activision. I think. Now, I've seen some videos, I've, I've watched Angry Joe um, on YouTube. For any of you who might not know who Angry Joe is, Angry Joe is a, a games reviewer. A YouTube games reviewer. Um, he, he, he's basically the Angry Joe show. He's actually quite good. He's a little bit hyper, to say the least. But um, he, he's a decent reviewer. He is a decent reviewer. He, he's pretty good. Um, and I saw him. He, he has a half an hour let's play of him playing uh, Might and Magic 10 in his own little kind of piss take way that he usually does. He's, he's a messer under it all. Joe is a bit of a messer, but um, if if you want a good look at Might and Magic 10 in you know like you know he, do, he does a couple of different settings and he kind of shows off the the combat and that. Um, check it out. It's, uh, the Angry Joe show is his, is his um, is his channel on on YouTube. Check it out. It's quite interesting actually. Um, but again, like 10 is completely different. It, it, it's a, like you can tell that it's been done by a different company. But it's kind of like with Might and Magic 9, you'd swear that was done by a different company, but it wasn't done by a different company. I'm pretty. I can't remember. I think it was. I think it was 3DO that made them, and it was New World Computing that published the Might and Magics. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that. I'm sorry about the frame rate drop there. It's just uh, I have a feeling it's more my computer than than anything. But I mean, um, we're in the process of of, check, of looking into it as to why it's happening. I've mentioned it to Alex, and we're looking into it at the moment. Um, I think I think we have an idea of what's going on with it. I don't know. It could be just my computer either. So. Please ignore that. You know, you it might never happen to you guys. But um yeah, ten is a completely different game to the others. It's it's one hundred percent turn base. It's completely turn base. Um it works on a grid system, just like Malevolence here does. Both in dungeons and overworld. Um it looks it looks really interesting. If you're a Might and Magic fan, check it out. As I said, check out Jaws, Angry Jaws uh video of it. it it's pretty damn good. Um, but anyway, back back to the topic that, at hand. Like, um, it's kind of like um, I think 3DO just again. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure 3DO were the developers of the Mountain Magic series. Um, I think they just kind of panicked after the huge success of Six. They panicked a bit. Because seven wasn't nearly as as good, uh, both in in story and and everything else. And I think the company kind of panicked, and they start they sort of came out with a, with a very weird eight, and then they they said right, obviously we have to up the graphics again, and they kind of forgot about everything else. It just they just lost the plot altogether. Come. Come nine. Um, like right, right now I can't say which is the best Might and Magic because I haven't played the earlier ones. I haven't played the four six, but as I said, it's something I'm going to be doing. And six was was a fantastic game. It was without a doubt the best in the later games um, after five. As I said, there's been a huge, you know, dispute as to which is the better Might and Magic. Fucking about two decades now, as to whether five was better or six was better. And to be honest with you, there's there's no point in me asking anybody, because the reason for this is because I'll never get a straight answer. Because I could ask ten people which is better, and five could it could easily end up with five cents. Might Magic 6 is better, and 5 people saying Might Magic 5 is better. I would get nowhere doing that to try and figure out 
myself, for myself, which is actually the better game. The only way that I'm actually going to be able to do it is actually by playing them both, and I've just, you know, now that I've got the pack, I'm just going to fucking do it. I'm going to start with one, and I'm going to make my way the whole way up all the games. It's, it's as simple as that, and then I'll be able to tell for myself. And as I said, I'll just, I'll do a video where I'm going to break it down. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to do a video about why, which I think is the better one, and why, and break it down to make it as understandable as possible as to why I think which one is better. You know. Because, you know, it's something that people have been saying for a long, long time, which Might and Magic is actually the better one. And it's hard to say, without actually doing it. <laughs> Like, if you look at, um, if you look at 5 and then look at 6, the graphic difference is tremendous. It, you'd swear that they just skipped a generation of graphics. Like, you know, it's like 6 just went two, two generations ahead, out of nowhere. And, um, you know, they changed it around as well because the gameplay was a bit different from what I've heard. Uh, with 5 and 6. Um, 6 kind of, it was real time with the choice where you could enter and exit turn base in, in, when it came to combat. It was, it was a mixture of the two. You just When, when it came to combat, you, you, you're generally in real time for the entire game. But if you were kind of in a dodgy situation or in a tough battle, you could enter turn base combat by hit, pressing enter. And um, and then th the games kind of followed on in, in, in that kind of way. And some people liked it, some people didn't. You know, so... It's a strange one, but I think what really happened with, with 6 and why... One of, my, one of my kind of thoughts about it is that... 6 kind of... As I said, it brought a new generation of gamers in. Like, the the old Might and Magic, say, 1 to 5, that was kind of... Those were played by the generation ahead of mine, mostly. Um, like, you know, people who would be now in their 30s, 40s, 50s, were, were those that kind of played the older ones, more 40s, 50s. Along with the with a select few in their in their late twenties, early thirties, who who might have got to play maybe three onwards. But when you when it comes to say my generation of gamers, which were all about graphics, they never bothered with like you know they never played the other ones. Um, like by by the time six came out. Five was impossible to find on a store shelf. Like the only reason I have five is thanks to Gog, and I did pick up a retail box of it a, a good few years ago, but I could never get it to run, um, so I ended up just selling it on again. But um, it was um, when six came out, it it kind of boomed because. You had a whole new generation of gamers, say my generation of gamers, coming in. And they started playing Might and Magic. So, in a way, it kind of. Their audience kind of doubled because you had the old school fans who were following it all along. But then you got the new guys in as well, and because it was so graphically enhanced, the new guys were kind of like, oh wow, because I remember playing it. And I was kind of like, whoa, these graphics are fucking awesome, and, and everything, because they were really, really good in the Six Flags time. So I think that's one of the reasons why there's such a... Sorry about that, it happened again, I don't know what it is, I think it's just due to the frame rate and that. Not to worry. Anyway, as I was saying, I think it's because of that that the, uh, there's this huge kind of dispute as to, as to which one is actually better because you've got you know, you've got the whole new generation that came in with, with the sixth game and then you have you know, the old school that have been following it from the start and 
this is where the kind of numbers are sort of differentiated, you know? So I think that's why there's such a dispute about it. But thankfully I'm not one of these that kind of go by graphics. I don't like, you know. I'm... I've actually been playing more old games over the past six, seven months than I have actually played of new games. Um, gaming has kind of lost its touch along the years. But that, that's a whole different, that's a whole different topic for another time. Maybe for the next long play. But, yeah, gaming has kind of lost its roots. Not just in the RPG, but, but in that as well. But, um, you know, so thankfully I'm not one of these that, you know, I have to have good graphics in order to play a game. I can get over a game. I can get over of graphics. For any game. If a game is good, I can get over the graphics. Like, it, it's no problem. I, I can I can deal with, with like graphics from two decades Mario. ago. I can I can deal with that. Um most others can't. Mario. Um this kind of sort of also Mario. revs up the whole dispute as to which one can I do better as well. Mario. So yeah, it, it's a bit of a it's one that I'm really, really interested in, in kind of coming to a conclusion on. Now, it's going to take me a fuck long time to do it because the Might and Magic games are pretty big. Um, it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know how big the first one is or the second one is because, like, you know, they weren't graphically, you know, it was the bare minimum of graphics back in that day. Um, unless, of course, you get the Amiga versions. The Amiga versions were fucking beautiful. They had fun. Fantastic graphics on the Amiga versions. Um, if you're actually interested in seeing the Amiga versions, you should be able to get screenshots somewhere. But if you compare the Amiga to the PC version, the fucking graphics, oh my god. You, you wouldn't think it was the same game. Because I, I remember I was looking for the first three Might and Magics when I was a kid. Um, and, but the, the problem was, was that I was... <laughs> By the time I got an Amiga, it was already... I was about five when I got uh, my my first uh, my first console, which was was an Amiga. If, if you can even call an Amiga a console, because the Amiga was pretty close to, to an actual, you know, PC. But, um... Yeah, by the, unfortunately, it was by the time I had an Amiga, it was already on the way out and it was really hard to get games for it and unfortunately I, I was never able to actually get uh, Might and Magic uh, 1, 2 and 3 for, for the Amiga but if you look at the at the difference um, in the graphics you can see I, I actually wish I could get my hands on it and do Let's Plays on the Amiga version but it's just not possible unfortunately but that was kind of the way back then as well the, the Amiga, like if you had a game on a, on a PC and it was on the Amiga as well, the Amiga was actually superior, both by visual and audio. Uh, the sound effects, like, uh, if, if you... As an example, if, if you watch the intro to Ida Beholder 2, and if you watch the PC version of it, and then you watch the the Amiga version of it. There is a massive difference both in audio and visual. I mean, it, the Amiga is just superior in every form. And um, it, the same applied to, to Might and Magic as well. I'm not even sure what year the first three Might and Magics came out, but um, they were before the Amiga. And, so I th I think that they want to try and boost their sales with the first two or three might and, with the first three might and magic. So they went and they made Amiga versions of them, and they were they were beautiful back in the day. They really were. Cause I remember seeing them in 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 this little, this little leaflet. I, mean, I can't remember for the life of me where I got the leaflet. It could have been. Could have been that one. I no, it wasn't that one. I don't know. I got it with some game, and I can't think what it was. But anyway, we're going a little bit off topic. Um, but yeah, it, it was fucking 
such a huge difference and you know it, it's it's definitely you know the, the Mighty Magic series lost its way it, it really did I don't know I don't know how they did it you know I think it kind of boils down to the to what a lot of games have done over the years and it's a case of they try to fix something that isn't broken and I, I think that's what happens with the Might and Magic series they try to you know they try to fix something that wasn't broken and it didn't work and they kept trying to do this in instead of Instead of sort of turning around and saying, right, this isn't working, maybe we should go back to the way we did six, they ended up just breaking and breaking and breaking instead of, you know. Damn, that's a tough table. They just sort of kept digging their own graves more and more and more. And it was sad. It was sad to see it. But, um, <laughs> what, what can you do? There is just nothing that I can, you know. It's just the way that gaming went. You know, there, there was a there was a lot of good series out there, and and they just kind of broke as they went along. Eye of the Beholder was a, was another good series, and the first one was kind of where it all started, and the first one was good, and then they went and improved the second one, and then the third one. They did the whole thing of trying to fix something that wasn't broken, and they tried different things, and I the Beholder Tree turned out to be the worst out of all of them. Well, the second one was by far the best, with the third one being at the bottom of of the trilogy. Um, another series that actually did the opposite of that was the was the Ishar or Ishar whichever way Ishar or whichever way you want to pronounce it um, I call it the Ishar series um, you can get the whole compilation of them on, on GOG and it has all three including the prequel Crystals of Arborea um, that was a series that got better as it went along uh, the first one was was a bit uh, you know, it was a bit basic, a bit bland. And then a second one came out and it was graphically enhanced. It played better. It was a genuinely better game. And then the third one came out and it was pretty fucking good as well. Um, it, it was a case that the games got better as they went along for the entire trilogy. So it kind of shows that if you do it right, you can do a fucking good trilogy. But you can also do a horrible one. And unfortunately, the Might and Magic's kind of got caught up with the same kind of thing where, you know, they were just trying to fix something that was not broken. And they ended up just breaking it all the more. And it. it <laughs> It's sad to see, because the Mighty Magic series had so much promise, it had so much potential. Um, like, again, I can't say what one was better, whether it was 5 or 6. But from my own personal experience right now, uh, in this moment, um, 6 was a fantastic game. It, it really was a fantastic fantastic game and it doesn't make sense to me how how they could make such a great game and then fuck it up for the next three games I just don't know how they did it um, it, it's beyond me you know I mean it, again why fix something that isn't broken and they did completely the opposite they tried they tried to make it too pretty and because they tried making it too pretty, they kind of forgot about other things as, as well. Um, like the, uh, as the as the Might and Magics went on, the the level designs just got worse. 
with, with each one. Um, it just became crappier and crappier. Like six was was a very nice and colourful game. It was it was actually very beautiful in, in many in many senses. It was it was bright. It was colourful, and you know in in certain places. And then like you, the dungeons were nice and dark and atmospheric. And you know there was this one place in six called Mire the Damned, and it was always nearly always foggy. There was never really a time in Mire the Damned that it wasn't foggy. Maybe if you were lucky with one day a year. And it wasn't foggy. And... And then when it came to 7, everything looked so dull and bleak and fucking depressing. It was all dark and... You know, even on a fucking bright sunny day, it still looked dark and uh and grungy and brown and stuff that you'd seen, you know, maybe a generation ago. It was, it was just horrible. Graphically and visually, it was horrible. It was depressing. Like, you wouldn't want to play it if you, if you suffered from depression, because it would just make you feel fucking worse. That's, that's how dark and horrible and grungy and just downright fucking ugly it was. Like, the models were hugely improved, but the actual layouts and level design and, you know, the skyboxes, if that's what you could call them back then, <laughs> they were horrible absolutely horrible and this continued and continued and they did the same with 8 and it just looked even worse and then they did the same with 9 and again it just looked horrible like ugh. actually when I, when I think about it 9 was supposed to have a better graphics in, in, in a long way now I know that they were using you know more kind of 3D model -y type models for ten, for 9 was 6 to 8 were kind of still sprite-ish really I suppose would be the, the correct way of putting it um, but it actually looked worse the graphics actually genuinely looked fucking worse I don't know how they did it they actually made 9 looked worse than 6 graphically and I don't know how they did it <laughs> It, it it bewilders me. It really does. It, in a, in a certain way, the the graphics looked worse. In, in, like, you know, there was a little bit. There was more attention to detail to a certain extent. But it just it looked ugly. It's as simple as that. Um. So yeah, I. I uh, <sighs> RPGs have just they they kind of. They've lost their way, and it, it's it's again going back to malevolence here. It, it's a fucking beautiful honor to have to, to be able to play such such a game that that goes back to you know the nineties era, and yet at the same time modernizes it with modern -ish, like you know modern graphics and and that and does it so well and and you know it's, it's kind of just thinking back to you know mainly the Might and Magic series I think what's triggered this off in my head more than anything was um, was, was seeing Might and Magic 10 and uh, also uh, Alex and Ryan were talking about Might and Magic in, in the last um, podcast as well but yeah it, it's it's kind of all brought back memories and that and I think you know I just thought I just thought it was something to talk about while I was doing the long let's play because you know I don't want to just be like going talking about the level and that's it like you know it's you no know, I don't want to be boring I want to talk about something to do with games and kind of factual things as, as best I can but anyhow I have gone on long enough for for this one I don't think I'm quite at the hour and a half but there's no point in me starting another floor 
Um, if I am not at the hour and a half, I'm just below it. I'm probably at one, 20, one hour, 20 minutes. But I don't see a point in starting another floor just for the sake of, of half an hour or 20 minutes. So I'm going to leave it here for this part, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed me kind of listening to me going on about, you know, maybe a bit of RPG history to a certain extent and and the Might and Magic series and and that. And, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to liven it up a little bit because, you know, instead of sort of saying, oh, what's around this corner and that, I just kind of wanted to talk about something different. So I do hope that you guys have, have enjoyed that. And, uh, again, if, if you're enjoying me doing long plays, and if you, if you like me doing long plays, and talking about games in general whilst I do it, um, let me know, because I'm sure I can come up with hundreds of different things to talk about in, so, in long plays. Um, you know, so if, if you like me ranting on about things to do with, with games and maybe the history of, of certain series and things like that let me know because there's plenty more I can talk about and if you, as I said if you like me doing long plays and if you'd maybe prefer me to do long plays to my standard 20 minutes half an hour let me know because I'd be really interested in hearing what you guys have to say about it and you know if you'd like me to do them I'll continue doing them because actually I'm really really enjoying these, doing these long plays I haven't done anything like this before so I'm really enjoying doing it but anyhow I have ranted on enough now um, I'm, I'm gonna leave it here for this part and we'll continue on in this dungeon in the next one I'm gonna save my game along with resting as well and um, yeah so we will continue on in the next one so thank you very much for watching guys I really hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, I will see you in the next one. Thank you, and have fun.